So let's look now at graphing polynomial functions. And what we're going to do in this lesson is sketch the graph of any given polynomial function, and then also be able to sketch the graph given information about that function. Now, anytime we are doing a sketch of a polynomial function, the first thing we have to do is, one, locate the zeros from factoring if necessary. And that's what we did in our last lesson, locate those zeros first. Also, what we want to do is then locate the y-intercept. And a polynomial function will always have some type of y-intercept. So just set x equal to 0 and solve for y. Both techniques that we've done before in a variety of different ways. There's some new pieces, though, as well. We want to determine the shape at each 0. And the shape comes from the multiplicity. Now, if we have a multiplicity of 1, Think about a linear function. Any multiplicity of 1, we're going to have an equation that creates a line that looks like that. The a value, well, is wherever it crosses that y-axis. And it's just a straight line or just a line through that a value for any multiplicity of 1. It's when we have higher order multiplicities that things get a little bit different. If we have an even multiplicity, 2, 4, 6, 8. The multiplicity is going to determine the shape. The number out front, or the sign, will determine whether it's pointing up or down. I'll show you what I mean here. If we have some a value, and let's say this is our a value on the graph, with a multiplicity of 2, a graph is going to come down, and much like a quadratic, bounce off and form that parabolic shape. We get that bouncing. That's if the a value is on the y-axis and if we have a positive term outside the bracket. Well, what if it's negative? Well, we could still have an a somewhere over here. We're not too concerned what the a value is, but this time we have a graph that's going to bounce down, so point down. That direction of the turn is going to be determined by the positive or the negative in front. Well, what about odd or multiplicity of 3? Multiplicity of 3, if we have an a value, let's say it's positive, so we'll put an a value out here. We're going to have a graph, and again, it's going to come down much like that parabolic shape, but instead of bouncing, it's going to form the other side of that parabola on the other side of the axis. Think of it like that would be the parabola on either side, there's that two parabolic-like shapes, but it just kind of goes through that a value. Same can be said if this term is negative outside. Then we would start down in a negative region, come up to our a value, and instead of bouncing, turn and go up, and we get that sort of shape. And we're going to do a lot of odd and even functions. The difference is we get the bounce at the even function, and it goes through at an odd, forming that shape. Once we have that, then we're going to look at the end behavior. Again, the number in front is positive or negative in the function, much like we looked at in the last lesson. From there, we're going to estimate the highs and lows of the function. And the key here is it's just an estimate using x values between zeros. And when we do an example, that'll become clear. Really, we're just going to substitute x values into the original function. And then, once we have enough points, we'll be able to plot a nice, smooth, continuous curve. And remember, that continuous curve is where we don't pick up the pencil. Well, let's look at an example here. Now, this example, first of all, it's already factored for us, which is nice. We don't have to worry about the first step of factoring. The zeros in this case, if we look at the zeros, we have a zero at x equals negative 2 and x equals positive 2. Zeros in those brackets, and we can then put those on our graph. Now, we are doing a sketch of this graph, so we're just going to sketch in a grid here, and we're going to put our two points there's one of our zeros, and there's the other zeros. Multiplicity is going to tell us the shape, but from here, now that we have the zeros, now we can actually find the y-intercept. So let's determine this y-intercept. It'll give us another coordinate. Remember the y-intercept is where x equals 0. Well, all we have to do 
is put zero in for x, take our original function, we'll go zero plus two squared and zero minus two cubed. You could probably do these calculations in your head, but the first bracket becomes four, second bracket is negative eight, and in the end we get a value of 32. Now because we're doing a sketch, 32, what we're going to do is put 32 way up here and just call it 32. That's going to force me now to label this axis to represent 2 on the y-axis and 32 way up at the top here. And here is our coordinate. Again, we're just doing a sketch as opposed to a graph. Well, that takes care of the y-intercept piece. Now we want to determine the shape based on the multiplicity. And I'm going to do the shape here just in a color that I'm going to erase later on. But the shape is going to tell us that with a multiplicity of 2, we're either going to have a graph that bounces from below or bounces from above. Something like that. That comes from our multiplicity of 2. And our multiplicity of 3 is going to tell us that our graph is going to look something like that or something like that. So we're just going to keep those in mind when we actually do the graph. But let's get rid of those for now because let's find the value of the degree. The degree is going to be very important. That's going to help us determine the shape. So the degree of this function now we could do a full expansion, but what we want to recognize with this function is that if we were to expand the first bracket, well, we know we have an x for sure. If we were to expand the first bracket, we're going to get some x squared term plus a bunch of other terms that we're not going to concern ourselves with right now. The second bracket, if we were to expand it, we know there'd be an x cubed term plus, again, a bunch of other terms that we're not going to worry too much about because the important piece here is when we do this multiplication, the first bracket multiplied by the second, we are going to get a leading coefficient of a negative and an exponent 5. And that's the important piece. We now know we have a fifth degree polynomial and that fifth degree polynomial is going to tell us that the left side is pointing up and the right side is pointing down. So we now know the end behavior of our graph. The left is going to point up and the right is going to point down. And this is all just getting more information so we can do a sketch. Our last piece is to do our estimate of some highs and lows. We know the graph is going to bounce at negative two we know the graph is going to go through 2. We know it's going to touch the y-intercept, and we know it's end behavior. So let's figure out what's going to happen in between negative 2 and 2. And some easy points to choose to make the math easy is let's find out what happens when f is equal to negative 1. So we just put f of negative 1 into our original function. We put f of negative 1 in there, we're going to have a negative, negative 1 plus 2, and that all will be squared, and negative 1 minus 2, which is all cubed. That is going to leave us with a negative 1 squared and a negative 3 cubed, which in the end will give us negative 1 multiplied by negative 27, which gives us a value of 27. And that'll allow us to now put another point on our graph at negative one, we'll be at 27. Well, we know halfway here would be 16, which means negative one and 27 is going to be somewhere around there. Again, doing a sketch of this graph. So try to do it again on your own, this time for positive one. 
And when you do the calculation, there's your solution. If you put x equals 1 into that function f, we'll get a value of 9, which if we go back to our graph, will allow us to plot one more point at 1, 9, which is approximately here. This now gives us a pretty good shape of the graph, and we can come along and do our sketch. Our graph is going to start by pointing up. It'll come down to negative 2, bounce off, go through our coordinates, take a turn here, through 2, back down, and there's our sketch of our polynomial function. And given the math we have right now, the best we can do is a sketch that looks like that, meeting all the criteria laid out in our step-by-step -step process. Now we may have to graph a polynomial function. We may also have to determine the equation of that polynomial function, either from a graph or from information. So let's start with this one. We're given information. Our polynomial is g of x, and we're told some information about it. In factored form, we're going to leave that. So we know g of negative 2 is negative 12. That's going to be helpful. And there are zeros. Zeros at 0, negative 1, and negative 2 thirds. Well, the zeros are very, very helpful because the zeros tell us what the brackets will be. So we have to think the bracket necessary for a zero is to have just a single x term x equals 0 is a solution. That means we have a single x term, but we have two of those zeros, which tells us it must be an x squared term. Our next zero of negative 1, remember we just worked backwards, that means this must be a plus 1, multiplicity of 1, that makes sense. And the next one, now the next one's a little bit tricky to see at first. If you don't see it, let's do a quick calculation here. We're told x equals negative 2 thirds. If we were trying to get that back to a bracket, we could multiply both sides by 3 and get 3x equals negative 2. Then bring the negative 2 to the other side, and we would end up with a solution of 3x plus 2. That's our bracket. Now, you might be able to see that right off the bat. If not, you can do that quick calculation, and that gives us our factored form of our brackets. And that takes care of all of the zeros. They're all done. What we haven't taken care of is this little piece right here. g of negative 2 is negative 12. And that g of negative 2 equals negative 12 is going to determine what is the leading coefficient. What is the a value of this function? And that leading coefficient is very important for the shape. We're told that g of negative 2 is equal to negative 12. So when we change all of our x's in g of x to a negative 2, we have to get a value of negative 12. So negative 12 must be equal to, well, we don't know what the a is, but we know that the x that goes in there is negative 2. Put negative 2 in for all the x's, and then we just have to do some calculations and some algebra, and that will help us find the solution. Well, this gets a little easy here. So negative 2 squared is 4. This bracket is negative 1. And we do negative 2 times 3 is 6. Sorry, negative 6 plus 2, we get negative 4. Multiplying this all out, we would get... 16a equals negative 12. And that's helpful because we want to determine what a is. So some quick calculations here. We get an a value equal to negative 12 over 16. But remember, we must simplify our fractions. So we get negative 3 quarters. But we're not done. What we must do is take our a value and write it in the equation that we created to get our final solution. So g of x is going to equal negative 3 quarters x squared. We don't need the brackets if we don't want to write them. x plus 1 and 3x plus 2. And there is the solution in factored form 
with the leading coefficient put in. And that's how we would determine our polynomial. From there, we could graph it if asked. Let's try one more. And we want to determine this equation from a picture, from a graph. Well, it's very similar to the first one. We are told now the actual points. We're told the y-intercept. We just have to put it all together. So I'm going to call this function f of x. We know that there is a 0 at this first point. And based on this shape of going through, straight through, there's a multiplicity of 1, which tells us the bracket x plus 6, and it would have an exponent 1. Well, the next point, we can see that bouncing. We have a multiplicity of 2. Well, that tells us our bracket of x plus 2 must be squared. And we're going to assume it's the lowest degree, so we don't know that it's technically a 4 or a 6, but we're going to assume it's squared. Our next point, multiplicity of 1 again. This time we have an x minus 2. And our last bracket again, we'll see that the multiplicity is 1. It just goes through there. We have x minus 6. And that is from our zeros. What we haven't determined is the leading coefficient, the a value. But we are given one other piece of information. We are given the y-intercept. That tells us when f of 0, when the x value is 0, the y value must be negative 5. That's just from the picture. That's going to help us find A. We can take that information and plug that in. So we know that f of x will equal negative 5 when our x value is 0. And 0 is a nice one because the math is pretty straightforward. I'm going to put the zeros in to make it clear. If you can just put the calculations in, go right ahead. So we're going to get a times 6. 0 plus 2 is 2 squared is 4. We'll have a negative 2 and a negative 6. And all of those numbers, when we multiply them together, we're going to get 288a. Doesn't matter that it's a weird number. Just some quick algebra here. Solve for a, and that'll give us the leading coefficient. Now once we have our leading coefficient, we can now write our equation. And so our f of x equation will be negative 5 over 288. And then just everything we had before. The order doesn't matter. x plus 6, x plus 2 squared, x minus 2, and x minus 6. And there is our function from that picture. And we're going to continue to explore this in more detail in class.